I'm somewhat troubled by your, your testimony here and in the other body. You appeared before the House Appropriations on April 9th. You were asked about media reports that portrayed the special counsel's team as frustrated that your March 24th letter didn't adequately portray the report's findings. When the congressman, I believe this congressman, Chris, asked if you knew what those members of the special counsel's team were concerned about, you testified in response, no, I don't. You then said you merely suspected they would have preferred more information was released with a letter. Now we know, that contrary to what you said on April 9th, that on March 27th, uh, Robert Mueller wrote to you expressing very specific concerns that your March 24th letter, remember you're testifying on April 9th, that your March 24th letter failed to capture the, to quote Mr. Mueller, the context, nature, and substance, close quote of his report. And what, I, what really struck me, Mr. Mueller wrote that your letter threatened to undermine a central purpose for which the department appointed the special counsel, to assure full public confidence in the outcome of the investigation. Why did you testify on April 9th that you didn't know the concerns being expressed by Mueller's team? when in fact you had heard those concerns directly from Mr. Mueller two weeks before? Well, as I said, I talked directly to, to Bob Mueller about his letter to me and, and specifically asked him, what exactly are your concerns? Are you saying that the March 24th letter was misleading or inaccurate or what? He indicated that it was not. He was not saying that and that what he was concerned about. That wasn't my question. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the question, which is the question from Christ was, reports have emerged recently, press reports, that members of the special counsel's team are, fr are frustrated at some level with the limited information included uh, in your March 24th letter in that they don't adequately or accurately portray the report's findings. I don't know what members he's talking about, I don't, I, I, and I, and I no, certainly no. am not aware of any challenge That's to the accuracy of the findings. Mr. Barr, you seem to have learned the filibuster rules even better than senators do. My question was, why did you say uh, you were not aware of concerns when weeks before your testimony, Mr. Mueller had expressed concerns to you? I mean, that's a fairly simple Well, thing. I answered a question. And the question was relating to unidentified members who were expressing frustration over the accuracy relating to findings. I don't know what that refers to at all. I talked directly to Bob Mueller, not members of his team. And even though I did not know what was being referred to, and, had, uh, and, and, and Mueller had never told me that, that, my, that the f expression of, of the findings was inaccurate, but I did then volunteer that I thought they were talking about the desire to have more information put out. But it wasn't my purpose to put out more information. Well, Mr. Barr, your, I feel your answer was purposely misleading, and I think others do too. Uh, let me ask you another one. You said the president is fully cooperating with an investigation, but his attorney had told a defendant he'd be taken care of if he didn't cooperate with the investigation. Is there a conflict in that? I'm sorry, could you just repeat Both that? Both Mr. Manafort and Mr. Cohen were told by Trump's personal attorney they'd be taken care of uh, if they uh, did not cooperate. You said that the president was fully cooperating. Is there a conflict there? Yes or no? No. Okay. Do you think it's fully cooperating to instruct a former aide to tell the attorney general to unrecuse himself, shut down the investigation, and declare the president did nothing wrong? Uh, I don't think, uh, well, obviously, since I didn't find it, it was obstruction. I felt that it, the evidence could not support an obstruction. I'm asking if that's fully cooperating. Yeah. I'm not asking whether that's obstruction. 
Is that fully cooperating? Yeah, he fully cooperated. So by instructing a former aide to tell the attorney general to unrecuse himself, shut down the investigation, and declare the president did nothing wrong, that's fully cooperating. Where is that in the report? That is on um, pay, uh, volume two, page five. On June 19, 2017, the president dictated a message uh, for uh, Lewandowski to yeah. deliver to Sessions. The message said the Sessions should publicly announce the notwithstanding his recusal from the Russian investigation. The investigation is very unfair to the president. The president did nothing wrong. Right. That's, okay, that's so. Cooperating. Well, f firstly, asking Sessions to unrecuse himself, I, we do not think is obstruction. And, and declare the president did nothing wrong. I'm not asking you it's obstruction. He's fully uh, cooperating. Well, I, I don't know if that declares the president did nothing wrong, although the president, in terms of collusion, did nothing wrong. Isn't that correct? Well, collusion is not a crime. It's the uh, obstructing. But is that fully cooperating to, to say that? Well, I don't see any conflict between that and fully cooperating with the investigation. The uh, president, of course, declared many times publicly in tweets and that and campaign rallies and all that he would testify fully what he never did testify correct uh, as far as i know well, i think you know whether he testified or as not. as far as i know he didn't testify and uh mr Mueller found the written answers to be inadequate is that correct uh i think he wanted uh, additional but he never sought it and the president never testified. well he, he never he never pushed it President never testified. Um, does the fact that uh, Mr. Mueller found the Trump campaign was receptive to some of the offers of assistance from Russia, or the fact that the Trump campaign never reported any of this to the FBI, does that trouble you? What would they report to the FBI? That they were receptive to offers of assistance from Russia. What do you mean by receptive? I think the report says, uh, you know, obviously, uh, well, it, obviously they were they were expecting to benefit from whatever the Russians. Page one seventy three, the uh, volume one the report says, in some the investigation established multiple links between Trump campaign officials and individuals tied to the Russian government. Those links included Russian offers of assistance to the campaign, and in some instances, the campaign was receptive to the offer, whereas others they were not. Well, I, I, that doesn't bother you at all. Well, I have to understand exactly what that refers to, what, what, what communications that referred to. Well, you have the report. I just gave you the page for the report. Let me bring in Jeff Tubin And Jeff, we know now uh, that Robert Mueller, based on this March 27th letter, uh, wanted not only a more context and nuance brought in uh, to the public discussion of what the Mueller report revealed, uh, but also that he and his team had written two executive summaries that had been written uh, with no ne uh, redactions necessary to be released immediately to the press, to the public, and that William Barr did not think that that was something he wanted to do. And Mueller said that what Barr had distributed on the 24th, the four-page letter, was misleading. Even if he didn't put out the, the summaries that Mueller wanted, the fact that he misled the country with that four-page summary in the accompanying press conference, that was what the question's about. That was what the question from, from uh, Senator Van Hollen, from Congressman Christ. The question was, both questions were the same version of the same, different versions of the same question. Are you aware that the Mueller staff, that Mueller is upset about what you did? And he said, no, and that's not true. And it's still not true, notwithstanding the bizarre and convoluted explanation that Barr gave to Senator Leahy just then. Well, Jeffrey, I don't want to uh, defend what lawyers do, but do <laughs> lawyers not hair split? I mean, is that not the point? I mean, he said, uh, I was asked about these unnamed individuals being upset about conclusions. And I didn't know anything about that, but I did know that Robert Mueller uh, was not completely happy with my letter, which is a separate issue. I mean, he could certainly have been more uh, revealing to the nation about what he knew. Uh, but I guess what I'm saying is, was he not being so specific? And I know this is what people dislike about lawyers, but uh, was he not being so specific as to 
technically what he was saying was accurate? Well, you know, lawyers split hairs when hairs can be split. <laughs> but I don't think that is a, 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 a hair that can be split. That congressman and that senator were asking about dissent from Mueller. There is no mistaking what they were asking about. There had been a New York Times story right just before Barr testified. And for, for, for Barr to answer, in effect, and in so many words, I am unaware of any complaints from Mueller is simply untrue. That's not hair splitting, that's false. You know, uh, it's, inter it's interesting because I want, I want the Laura Jarrett, who covers the Justice Department for us. Increasingly, a lot of Democrats, you're hearing it this morning, are coming out, including Adam Schiff, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, saying uh, Bill Barr, the attorney general, must go. Either he should resign or maybe down the road he might even be impeached. Yeah, and certainly Democrats are angry about this, and you can understand why. Um, the attorney general, I do not predict, is going to go quietly or going to go willingly. The standard for perjury is quite high. Uh, I cannot foresee a situation uh, in which that's going to happen here. The president, of course, has been very happy with his performance, uh, not only with the four-page letter, but clearly with his use and invocation of spying, which we saw Republicans hammer today. While Democrats are all over the issue, of this report and Mueller's concerns, Republicans are on a different planet with spying, and obviously that's something that makes the president very happy. You know, John, it's interesting because in his testimony today, the Republicans had one line of questioning, attacking Hillary Clinton, going after the Obama administration for not doing enough when there were indications that Russia was trying to interfere in the election. But at one point, I think this was due, and, and you cover the Justice Department for us, the Steele dossier, uh, he even suggested in his response to a question, maybe that was part of a specific Russian disinformation plot to sow dissent here in the United States. And the States. Attorney General yes. says he's looking into this. Yes. Uh, when the Republicans do that, they always say paid for by the Clinton campaign. They don't acknowledge that it was first paid for <laughs> by Republican interests who did not like Donald Trump. In not the, the dossier per se, but the dossier per se, but the, the, the research. And then it was handed off later on. Uh, look. In Bill Barr, Donald Trump has what he always wanted Jeff Sessions to be, which is an attorney general who says Tuesday is Monday and the sun is the moon and views his job as protecting the president, not being America's lawyer. Uh, there's just no question about that. Uh, and again, uh, you know, the partisans out there will go nuts on the Internet uh, saying, how dare you just match up what he is saying and what is in his letter with what is in here. They are not in the same universe. They are not the same set of facts. They are alternative facts. That is what the Attorney General of the United States is saying compared to Bob Mueller. Now, if he wants to say Bob Mueller got it wrong, let's have that conversation. And back to the Republican point, I'll say this again. They can have a, there may be something in the Clinton email investigation. If there is corruption in there, they should have a hearing and they should expose it. That's not what today's supposed to be about. They just use that as their default because they don't want to talk about this. Pamela, you know, uh, the, the other point, uh, he was defending his use of the word bar spying mm -hmm. that was going on against the Trump campaign by either Obama administration officials or so-called deep state operatives inside the FBI or the Justice Department or the intelligence community. Yeah, that's right. I mean, he, he said basically that it would have been an anemic effort if it was just one FISA, one informant. But I find it hard to believe that Bill Barr said the word spying during the last go around not knowing the kind of reaction it would spark. He tried to defend his use of the word today, saying he doesn't view it as pejorative, that his first job was in the CIA, that it's an all-encompassing word, that there's no synonym for it. But he's been in Washington for a very long time. And he should know that using a word like that and that indicating that that might have happened on the Trump campaign, basically echoing uh, the sentiment that we've heard from President Trump, he should know the kind of reaction that that's going to spark, no matter how he views the word spying. 